This is Eric. I'm going to talk about making a web page using JavaScript that pulls data from Cardo and maps it, and then creates this fancy dropdown over here to filter the data. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about that. And I already, in a previous video, talked about getting to this point without the dropdown and that's using this glitch site over here. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so it's the same exact thing without the dropdown. And I'm going to ignore all of the stuff I already talked about in that video. So if you need a refresher on any of that, I suggest that you seek out that video. Um, I am strictly going to talk about adding a dropdown to a web page with Cardo. Okay. So first things first, I'm um, going to show you the data set that I'm working from. This is Tiger Shark Habitats, and it's a pretty simple data set. There are just three features, um, but the most obvious way to categorize these is by the life stage column here. So the life stage column has three distinct values, adult, juvenile, and neonate. And I just want a dropdown that will uh, filter the data based on this life stage column. Uh, so if you look at my dropdown over here, I have those same life stages in the dropdown. When I select adult, you see that the data goes away momentarily and comes back with less of the data. Uh, the adult habitat is pretty large, so it's not as obvious as, say, the neonate, which is pretty restricted. Um, and juveniles somewhere in between. And so dropdown can be a really handy way to switch between categories of mapped data. And I'll show you how to do that. First things first, in the HTML, I'm going to add a select. Select is a dropdown. Um, and I'm going to give it a class that I will remember. I called mine Layer Picker. You could call it whatever you want. Um, and then I will add an option for the, the default. So if I want to go back to showing all of my data, I will usually have an option for that. As you can see back here, if I go back to show all life stages, it shows all the data. So that's, that's what that is there for. And then for each category that I want to show, I'll make a, another option. And in the options, um, this value is important um, in a way that will become clear later on. The text that you put inside, though, that's less important. That's more, uh, that's more important for the user to understand what they're about to click on. So these two things don't have to be the same, the value and the text. I'll, I'll show you um, if I change this to um, choose adult. Uh, when I look here, um, the text in the dropdown option has changed, but the dropdown still works fine. So it's really this value that um, is determining how this dropdown is going to work. I'm going to turn that back to the way it was and leave it there. Um, so that's really, that's all you're going to have to change in your HTML is you're adding a select. Now, um, in contrast to the single layer uh, video, I have, since we're showing something on top of the map, as we are with the dropdown, it doesn't have to be on top of the map. It could be somewhere else on the page. I'm just putting it on top of the map because that feels like an obvious place to put it. Um, so I'm putting the select here after the map element, which I talked about in the other video. But I'm putting both of them inside a div called map wrapper. And what this helps with is it helps with styling. So the map wrapper, in my case, I'm making it um, 
take up the full page. Uh, the really important thing is this position relative. Um, so if I change the width of the map to say 50, you'll see back on my page that the drop down moves around with it. And if I gave the map wrapper a margin top of 50 pixels, you'll see still that the drop down moves around with it. <clears throat> And that's happening because of this position relative. Not a thousand percent, a hundred percent. And that that allows you to position your layer picker absolutely, um, but make that absolute be relative to the map. Um, so if you have things that you're overlaying on top of your map that are kind of floating off into other parts of the page, but you actually wanted it on top of the map, I recommend wrapping your map like so. So wrap it in a, no. I just broke my page. Um, I accidentally copied. Okay. Um, so I, re I recommend, I'll do this more carefully this time. I recommend wrapping your map in a thing called map wrapper. Call it whatever you want, but just make sure when you style it that you're giving it a position of relative and then the rest should just fall into place. Okay, so that's the HTML for the drop down that creates this um, this drop down, as you're probably familiar with from other web pages. And what we want to do is use JavaScript so that when you change the option in the drop down, you get a different result on your map. So we're going to go back to our JavaScript. And like I said, all the way up to line 32 or so. That's from the original, um, that's from the video that I made on making a single layer cardo map. So I'm going to skip that. And I'm going to focus on lines 34 through 58 down here at the bottom. And you see that they start with this comment, listen for changes on the layer picker. And this is a couple of steps. Broadly, we're going to find the dropdown. Then we're going to do what is called uh, listen for an event. We're going to listen for a change on the dropdown. And then finally, we're going to change the SQL for the later, layer. Um, so. So let's start at the beginning. We're finding the dropdown by its class. So if you have um, one thing, one element with the class layer picker, as we do, going back to our HTML, we have this class layer picker right here. Then you can say document dot query selector dot layer picker. The dot is important here. This is like a CSS selector. Um, and you're going to select the dropdown. And once you have the dropdown, you can listen for events on it. I'm going to store my dropdown in a variable called layer picker because I might want to use that later. And you see down here on line 42, I'm saying layer picker dot add event listener. So I want to listen for an event. And that event for a dropdown is called change. So whenever the dropdown changes, let me know about it. I want to run some code. And all of this code that is indented another level, this is lines 43 through 57, this is all happening whenever the dropdown changes. And to prove that, I'm going to open up the developer tools. So 
I'm in Firefox here, so it might look a little different from Chrome, uh, but the idea is similar. Up at the, there are a number of tabs in developer tools. Um, you want to find the console one. That's pretty consistent across browsers. And you'll see whenever I change this drop down, so I change it to adult, you'll see that this text is logged out. Right? So you see that um, the code recognizes that the dropdown changed, and it also recognizes that value. And that value is the one from the HTML. So you see, uh, even though we pick show all life stages, all is the value that it gets. And that's because of the HTML. So um, this e.target.value, when the layer picker changes, that is the value back in the HTML in this attribute, this value attribute. So at this point, um, I'm putting that value in a variable called life stage because I'm going to use that a few times later on. And if we fast forward to line 57 and 56 and 57 rather, um, I mentioned that sometimes it helps to log out a message telling you what's going on with your code. Um, in particular, in event listeners, I find it helpful to just be just to confirm that the event's actually happening. Um, so I'm both confirming that we're listening successfully to the dropdown changing, but I'm also confirming that I'm getting the correct value, and that can be really really helpful when things are not working well. So I, I strongly recommend, especially as you're getting started here, in your event listener, add a console.log uh, statement. Sometimes that will just be console.log, um, yes, yes, the dropdown change worked. I can, I can add that here just so you can see that. So console.log, yes, the dropdown change event worked. And now when I change the dropdown, we should see a couple of messages logged. And they should be in the order that they are in the code. So yes, the dropdown change event worked. And then later on, it tells us what the value was. So I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of that and leave it as it is. So we have the current value from uh, the dropdown. And now in these lines, we're saying if that value was all, so if that was resetting the value of the SQL, then we're saying we're talking to the data source. We're telling the data source to change the query to select all of the data. So select star from our data set. Uh, with no where condition, just select everything. Otherwise, if it's not the word all, so it's a specific value like adult or juvenile, then we'll create an SQL statement that filters to just that life stage. So uh, select star from the data set where life stage is equal to whatever uh, the value of the dropdown is a hard time with the if conditions, I totally recommend throwing in some more console.logs. And describe what's what you think is going on. And then back on your page, let's see all was not selected. Um, all was selected. All was not selected. 
So if you're having a hard time with the if statement, throw in some console.logs and see what what the results are that you're getting. The other issue that you'll probably run into um, is creating a proper SQL query. So what I recommend is back in Cardo, open up the SQL console here and I'm just going to get rid of my username just to make it consistent with the example we're looking at. So, um, you're likely familiar with adding a where condition to SQL, and I could say where cardo db id is equal to 2. And now, when I run that query, you see that it's only the rows with cardo db id equal to 2. Um, if I wanted to do it by life stage, which is what we're doing in our code. Um, because it's text, I need to wrap that text in single quotes. So juvenile. It's not going to change anything, so it's going to be a little underwhelming. Uh, but it did the same thing. Uh, let's try adult. So I replaced the text in the single quotes with adult. And now you'll see that just the adults are selected. Um, so we want to recreate that in our code. And if you look back at our code, um, the part that's probably a little confusing when you first start out here is we're using this variable called life stage. That's the value from the HTML from the dropdown, remember? Um, we're putting that in to our SQL query no matter what the life stage was that was selected. So we could say if life stage is equal to adult, select the adults. If it's equal to juvenile, select the juveniles. But we're using um, we're using a drop down which can tell us what was selected, and we can just drop that directly into our SQL. Um, so it's fine for three categories to do it that way. But once you get up to say ten or twenty you'll be wishing that you had done it this um, this quicker way. Now, um, one of the confusing things here is you still need the single quotes because it's still an SQL query. Um, so mixing quotation marks like this when you're first starting out can be pretty confusing. Um, and I strongly recommend, again, console.log is your friend in a situation like this. I'll just log out exactly what I'm setting the SQL to. So I'll just copy and paste. And then if we go back to our page, when I select adult, you'll see, okay, let me make this a little bigger so it doesn't wrap. You see select star from the data set where life stage equals single quote, adult, single quote. So that's exactly what we want. Um, let me try it with neonate. You'll see the same thing, but instead of adult in the string, it's neonate. And I'm actually going to copy and paste this whole thing into my Cardo console because I want to make sure that it actually works. So I'm going to run that query, and you see that it selected just the features with that life stage. And that, that I think, is this line is probably the trickiest line um, when you're working with dropdowns and Cardo in JavaScript. So, <clears throat> but that's how I would debug it to, to figure out what's going on. Just console.log that query console.log the same exact thing and see if that works in Cardo itself. If it does not, it is not going to work in your code. So go back to the drawing board and figure out a query that will work here before you try to make it work here in your code. Um, so, so again, we're taking this text, 
we're adding the life stage to it, which is the value from the drop down, and then we have to add this pesky single quote at the end. Uh, so that's a lot of punctuation to use in one line of code. I recognize that, um, but hopefully you can work from this template, and and that will get get you by. There's one small difference between this code for the dropdowns and the code for the single layer that I mentioned before. That's going to be on this line, line 18. And I did not mention this earlier, but I'm mentioning it now. So in the single layer code, much simpler, no dropdown or anything, I, um, I use cardo.source.dataset and I just get the data set by name, right? So you can use cardo.source.dataset if you're not planning on running any SQL on it later on. This will work just fine. That's why I used it in the single layer. With the dropdown, though, we want to change the SQL later. So you have to make a pretty small different small change. Let me copy and paste this in to the code just so you can compare them side by side. So we have um, the the original one was cardo.source.dataset and then the dataset name. The new one is cardo.source.sql, so it's an SQL layer rather than a dataset layer. Um, and then I have to run an initial SQL query here. So instead of just the dataset name, Probably to begin with, you'll just say select star from, and then the data set name. Uh, yeah, but that's you need to do that in order to use set query down here to change the SQL query on that data source. So I'll get rid of that. And let's go back to our page and just do a quick recap. So I had to... I started with a single layer on my Cardo map in JavaScript. I added in the HTML, I added this dropdown, which is a select element. And then I added some code to listen for changes on that dropdown. And as the dropdown changes, it runs some SQL in Cardo to change the data in the source. And I use console.log a bit in order to see um, see the changes. It's kind of hard to see the changes if it's broken. Uh, so the developer tools can be really, really helpful in that situation. So. I recommend having the developer tools open while you're working through this, uh, to both to see errors, but also to see your messages to see um, if you're if you're actually getting the values that you expect, or to see if your SQL is getting generated the right way. Okay, so I'm going to link to this glitch site in the description for this video, uh, so you should be able to follow along fine. Hope that helps.